Hey, thanks again for tuning in for one of these short devotions. I want to talk to you today about a little bit of attitude. Attitude. And the first thing I want to talk about is what Jesus did on the way to the cross. Or, or maybe better yet, what Jesus did not do on the way to the cross. You didn't hear any complaining on the way to the cross for Jesus. You didn't hear any defensiveness on the way to the cross from Jesus. You didn't hear any blaming on the way to the cross for Jesus because his suffering had a purpose and he humbly and gently suffered to pay for something that was totally our fault. There was no reason for him to pay for it. He did not contribute in any way. Most situations are, well, it's a little bit our fault, a little bit their fault. Not in this case. 100% our fault, 0% Jesus' fault, but yet he paid the price to make it better. And Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11 says that we as Christians, we as believers, we as followers of Christ are called to have the same attitude of Jesus. So not only living a life of love, but doing it with grace, doing it with humbleness, doing it with that, that gentleness and, and that love that Jesus did it with. So how in the world can we pull this off? How in the world can we have the attitude of Christ? Well, first of all, it takes faith. You've got to have the faith to believe that God is going to take care of you. Because if you're so consumed with worry about yourself, you're going to be holding back. But if you have the faith that, man, if I'm obedient, God is going to take care of me, then you are free to go and serve and live in obedience. Second thing, you have to have the faith that any suffering or sacrifice that you do is totally worth it. Because just because God is going to take care of you doesn't mean that it's going to be difficult. Just because all things work together for good doesn't mean that the working together part is not painful, is not, is not difficult, does not require sacrifice. So we got to have faith that, that the difficulties and the pain and the sacrifice um, is totally worth it. That the, that the suffering is totally worth it. That it's not going to be in vain. That God's going to use those things for good. Thirdly, it's got to have a grateful heart. We have to appreciate and realize the awesomeness of the gospel and the vastness of the love and kindness that Jesus gave to us. That's why Paul says so many times, um, Give thanks for all things. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, because it's that thankful heart that empowers you to, to do the things that God called you to do. When you look at him and what he did for us, then the sense overwhelms your heart. How can I not obey him? And then lastly, it takes love. The same love he gave us, we have to give others. The kind of love that loves them even more than we love ourselves. So does this sound like the Savior you serve? Does this sound like the Jesus that rescued you? Does this look like the direction and the example Jesus gave for us to follow? If you're convinced that this is who Jesus was, if you're convinced that this is the example he called us to, then let's join together. Let's do this thing. Let's love others the way that Jesus loved us, and let's do it with the same attitude that he did, with that love, that humbleness, that kindness, that grace, because we were freely given that. And shouldn't our attitude reflect that it's our pleasure to freely give it to others as well? Thank you so much for listening. If you need someone to speak with, someone to pray with, give us a holler here at First Baptist Honey of Half. We'd love to hear your heart and pray with you as we seek God together. Have a good one.